But tonight we're going to celebrate. A lot of people have spent a lot of time over the years trying to get rid of this mayor. And we would say at the top of that list is Chicago Alderman, our friend Raymond Lopez, who joins us tonight for an after action report. Congratulations, Alderman Lopez, uh, on what happened last night. I have no idea what's going to happen next, but it's worth pausing for a moment to say democracy worked, is it not? Absolutely, Tucker. Good evening. And, and before we start, let me just say our hearts and prayers are with an officer in Chicago tonight that was shot um, in the line of duty in the most dangerous of American cities right now. But with what happened with yesterday's election, democracy worked. And the pendulum, I believe, is starting to swing in the right direction, back to the middle, back towards common sense, where the, the outrageous policies of woke narratives and agendas are coming to an end. And I think that we have one more chance in Chicago, one more hurdle to reach, where we finally put this to rest, where we can have common sense prevail across the entire city, where the law-abiding citizens are the ones that we're fighting for, and that where the city is no longer safe for criminals, but for the good people of the city of Chicago. Hey, I, you always set the most basic possible standards for governance, like can you walk outside your house without worrying mm -hmm. about getting shot to death? I th and I think that's the place to start. So do you think, you said there's one more chance, is there a candidate who you think in, would uphold the st that standard? Yes, I think we have a runoff in six weeks in the city of Chicago because nobody got the majority of the votes uh, yesterday, uh, one of which is Paul Vallis, the former CPS school uh, CEO and uh, former budget director for the city of Chicago. He's backed by law enforcement, supports all our first responders, and is basically billing himself as a problem solver. His opponent is a Cook County Commissioner, Brandon Johnson, who is super left, tied with our teachers' union, and his claim to fame is being able to take away the background checks for renters so that landlords don't know who they're renting to. Come on. I, I mean, the, and is, uh, just yesterday would not uh, disavow looting in the city of Chicago as a means, as a justifiable means. So I think we have some pretty clear choices in Chicago. It's just up to the voters to not fall for the narratives, not fall for the race baiting and gaslighting, but to focus on what we need to do to put our city back together. So one candidate is for restoring safe streets. The other won't disavow looting. So it I seems like a, a pretty clear choice. Alderman Lopez, I hope you'll come back with an update on that race. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And congratulations. Thank you, Tucker. In August of 2020, Kyle Rittenhouse shot three men in self-defense. There's no dispute that it was in self-defense. It's all on video, and a jury reached that same conclusion. So that's a fact. He shot them in self-defense. But self-defense itself is no longer a defense. It's becoming illegal in this country. One of the men who tried to murder Kyle Rittenhouse with a gun in his hand, which is on video, is now suing Kyle Rittenhouse. How does that work? Well, Kyle Rittenhouse joins us to respond straight ahead. Plus, our second gentleman, <laughs> the dude who's married to Kamala Harris, who won't kiss him without a mask on, has some thoughts about toxic masculinity, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.